Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. Nina AJ is my name. Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 hi children. Hi, hi, of, of the Lord. Of the Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus, friend of, friend of little children. We want to wish all of you a happy new year. Happy new year. We are in the month of January in the year 2022. Wow, we are blessed. We count ourselves blessed. Precious ones, we have come to you again this month, this week, to discuss the word of God, to learn and to have fun with one another. So precious ones, find a place and sit, invite a friend, let mom and daddy join you, grandma, grandpa, aunt, cousins, let them join you and let us learn the word of God through fun. Okay, now we also have precious ones that I have zoomed in that I hear with me. Most of them I always hear and they are going to introduce themselves. So we'll start with the first person. And then after that, we'll go ahead and hit on our memory verse. So precious ones, introduce yourselves. And when they are done, you at home, we want to know your name too. Okay, let's start with the first person. Hello, my name is Sean Apiaminka from Dallas District. Hello, my name is Janelle from Apiaminka. I'm also from the Dallas District. Hello, my name is Andy Cabal from Cincinnati District. Hello, my name is Esther Morgan from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Darren Afford from Cleveland District. Precious ones, you are all welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you so much. You are all welcome again. Thank you for coming. Precious ones, this year we have set aside that we will be learning in the next five weeks. The next five weeks, we'll be learning um, some series. Uh, we have some amazing series that we want to share. And pretty much we are going to um, be talking in the next five weeks, we'll be talking about the walk in, the walk in, the walk in, the walk in. So pretty much the walk in, somebody will ask, why is Auntie Nina talking about walk in, walk in, walk in? <laughs> yeah. Um, the next five weeks, we have set it aside that we will be learning more about walking in faith, walking in love, walking in truth, walking in wisdom. So there are five series that we'll be looking at. In the next five weeks, that is what we have decided that we'll go ahead and, and treat that and share that idea with precious ones. And we know you are going to love it. And the first one we'll be talking about today is the walk in wisdom, walk in wisdom walking in wisdom. So before we even go ahead with anything, I want us right now to just go straight and then look at um, our memory verse, looking at our memory verse for today. So we'll be looking at our memory verse for today first. Can you see my screen? You see my screen? Not no, yet. Uh, not, yet. not yet, okay. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and share my screen so that we can go ahead with the lesson. So our memory verse will be taken from James chapter one, verse five. James chapter one, verse five. And let me share my screen right here quick so we can go ahead with that. James chapter one, verse five. James chapter one, verse five. Okay. Uh -oh, now I can't find it. So uh, can somebody open to James chapter one, verse five for us? James chapter one, verse five. And if you are there, you can read it for us. James 1, verses 5. I'm reading from the NLT version. 
If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, Ms. Esther. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. So James chapter one, our memory verse, James chapter one, verse, let me go back here. James chapter one, verse one to five. James chapter one, verse one to five. And I read, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for accent. Amen. God bless you. Um, and we read this from the NLT. Mine is from the NLT version. So precious ones at home, we want you to work on that. Um, the strategy is that you just take the first line and then as you go on, you add one more word to it. And I bet you by the time you, you're done, you realize that, oh, I can say this. This wasn't even that hard. So precious ones, work on it at home and uh, share it with a friend or a brother or your Sunday school teacher at home. Okay. God richly bless you. So we will be looking at our topic for today. Topic for today, walking in wisdom, walk in wisdom walk in wisdom remember we said the first the next five weeks we'll be looking at walk walk in so the first one we are treating today is walking in wisdom walk in wisdom and the objective of our lesson today is to learn the definition for the spiritual wisdom and be able to make wise decisions that reflect our relationship to jesus christ Right. And then the main idea here is that there is a wise decision or a good decision and unwise or bad decision for every situation. But precious ones, walking in wisdom requires humility and constant reliance on God. And pretty much that's what we'll be looking at today. Walking in wisdom requires humility and constant reliance on God. God. And we have a lot of scriptures that we'll be looking at. Okay. We'll look at a lot of scriptures today. First Corinthians chapter 10, 23 to 24. First Corinthians chapter 3, 18 to 20. James 1, 5, which came from our memory verse. Proverbs 11, verse uh, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 2. Um, First Kings 3, 1 to 28. And then um, Psalm 111 verse 10 and Psalm 119 verse 105. The Proverbs 11, I repeated it twice, so pardon me for that. So pretty much that's what we'll be looking at for today. So as time goes on, I know we'll be reading all these. We'll be touching on them to kind of continue our lesson. So I'll stop sharing here and uh, we'll go straight and look at our lesson. And then after we are done, we will come back here and pretty much um, look at, um, they will come back to the PowerPoint and look at what we have to talk about for today. God bless you. So the first one that we'll be looking at here um, is um, if someone can read us the first reading, the first Corinthians. Is someone there to read for us? Um, can I read? The first, the first okay. reading. Antonio, can I read? Somebody can read for us First Corinthians chapter 10, 23 to 24. If you are there, you can go ahead and read for us. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 10, 23 to 24 from the NIRV. It says, it is subtitled, The Believer's Freedom. Verse 23, you say, I have the right to do anything, but not everything is helpful. Again, you say, I have the right to do anything, but not everything builds us up. Verse 24, no one should look out for their own interests. Instead, they should look out for the interests of others. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 to 24 from the NIRV. Amen. 
Amen. God richly bless you. Who will read the next one for us? The next one is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 18 to 20. 1 Corinthians 3, 18 through 20. I'm reading from the NIV version. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. Amen. 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 Amen and amen and amen and amen. God richly bless all of you, precious ones. So I want us to pretty much, precious ones, what does it mean to be wise? And this question goes for all of us. We'll come back to the scriptures. What does it mean to be wise? The floor is open. Anyone can answer it. Yes. Being wise means acting with or expressing experience, knowledge, or good judgment. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Great answer. Yes. What it means to be wise, having a good judgment, and also knowing when a decision or activity isn't beneficial, right? So, precious ones, before we even go ahead with our discussion and all that, I want to share my screen again, and then we are going to look at some few things. We are going to look at some few things here. Uh, it's a matching game. It is a good idea or a bad idea. And the purpose of this is pretty much, um, we it pretty much helping us to understand that there is a right, um, right or wise decision for every wrong decisions, right? So pretty much this, you can decide to make a right decision or you can decide to make a wrong decision, right? But either way, it is all coming from your what? From your brains, right? And remember the topic for our lesson today is wisdom, working in wisdom. So I'm gonna share my screen one more time and we are going to play this game. And feel free, when your friend goes for the first one. If it is good, then we look at the other side of it. So let's start with a bad idea card. Somebody can read for us what they see on the screen. The bad, the bad idea cards. Yes, Benedict. Some bad ideas are, she can make good grades on a test, get revenge on someone who's new to you, Take a friend's video game from your aunt with you. Make fun and leave kids at school. Take money from your mom or dad's wallet without asking. Want to teach you because you're upset. Stay outside too long and leave your home and complete. Wait to clean your room until your mom or dad threatens you to drown you not listening. Not helping to fun with you or needy family because you'd rather do something fun. Ignore your friends when they are sad because you don't want to hear their problems. Keeping all of your possessions to yourself, even though you don't need all of them. Don't tell your friends. God bless you. God bless you. Fantastic reading. Who want to do the next one for us? The good idea card. The good idea card. Who want to do that? Yes, Declan. Cards. Ask the friend if you can borrow their new video game. Be a friend to the new kid at school. Ask your mom or dad for the money for the money to see a movie. Be respectful to the to your teacher even though you're upset. Complete your homework before going outside to play. We can hear you. Come come a little bit closer to your computer. Study to make a good, a good grade on your test. Be kind to someone who is mean to you. Ask a friend if you can borrow their test. Video, new video game. Be a friend to the new kid at school. Ask your mom or dad for the money to see a movie. Be respectful to your teacher even though you're upset. Complete your homework before getting outside to play with your new 
with your friends. Clean up your room the first time you volunteer to help with the family that that will help the living family. Pray for the family you serve. Give away some of your clothes and toys to the new friends. Encourage your friends to church so that they can learn more from God. Amen. Um I think it was hard we hearing um Declan Reed. I think it's the volume was too far, but let's let's go ahead with that. Um, so let's look at the good ideas and then the bad ideas. Now we are on the big screen. Good ideas and bad ideas. So uh, precious ones, you can decide to go for the first one, and then the other person goes for the if you pick the good one, the other person will pick the bad one. So bad decision, good decision. So the person wants at home to can learn. So the first person can go and then the person, the other person can say the other, the opposite of that. Yes, um, Esther. So for a good idea, I think that um, you should study to make a good grade on the test. Fantastic. It is good to study to make good grades on your test, Benedict. Oh, bad. There was a lot of noise at your back when we didn't hear. What can you repeat yourself? One bad decision to make a good grade on the test. Yeah, one bad decision. God bless you, Benedict. Um, one bad decision is when you make a decision that you are going to cheat to make what? to make a good grade on the test. That's really bad. Yes, um, Janelle and, and Sean, go for the next one. A good idea is to be a friend to the new kid at school. Fantastic. And a bad idea is to make fun of the new kid at school. Bad idea is when you decide to make what? Fun of a new kid at school. Fantastic, God bless you all. So the next one will go for Darren and Declan. One good idea is to pray with a friend who is sad. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, one good idea is to pray with a friend who is sad. One bad idea is to ignore your friend when they are sad because you don't want to hear their problems. Fantastic. I can hear you all now. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, I better do. One good idea is to be kind with someone who is needy. Be kind to someone who is mean to you. Be kind to someone who is mean to you. Yes, Miss Astor. A bad decision is to get revenge on someone who's being mean to you. Amen. A bad one is when you try or you make a decision that you are going to what? get a revenge on someone who was mean to you or who is mean to you, right? That is a bad one. Remember, precious ones, we're talking about wisdom. And this is a practical example of games, that matching games we are playing before we hit on our lesson for today. Yes, who want to go next? Janelle and Sean. A good idea is to ask your mom or dad for the money to see a movie. Fantastic. And the bad idea is to take money from your mom or dad's wallet without asking. Hmm. This falls under the Ten Commandments, right? That shall not steal, right? So a bad idea is what? Taking money from your mom's wallet without not asking for it making the right decision or making the wrong decision. Yes, we'll go with um, Esther. Esther, do you wanna pick the next one? Sure. A good decision is to clean up your room the first time you are asked. Amen. Amen. Declan, do you wanna go with the next one? Yeah. A bad decision is to wait is to wait to clean your room until your mom or dad trusts you to ground you not listening. Mm, I'm sure we can relate to all this, right, precious ones? These are practical examples. We can all relate to that. Now, uh, Benedict, can you go with the next one? And then 
Um, Daron will, will respond to that. Benedict, internet was really, really bad. Um, um, Daron, you can start and maybe we'll let Benedict try, try again. Okay. The last good I not the last of them all, but then what the last good idea on the board is giving away some of your clothes and toys to a good cause. Okay, God bless you. Fantastic. Yes, Benedict, do you want to come in again with with a bad decision? I think I yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. A bad idea is to keep all your possessions to yourself, even though you don't need all. Holding on to things you don't even need, right? I want it. I want that. I want this. I want that. You're holding on to all this, right? That is a bad decision. God richly bless you. I know, precious ones, you have learned something. So we will come back to our lesson and then pretty much focus on that and then move on. So that was a matching game pretty much about good idea and then the bad idea. And the reason why we did that, because we can actually relate, right? We can actually relate to this practical examples. I'm sure a lot of you here, mom have told you oh, to clean your room. Um, sometimes you don't do the homework. You'll be out there playing and they have to tell you. These are all practical examples. Why? We are not perfect. We are human. And as we grow, as we, we, we kind of grow up to become teenagers and go to the youth and pension, mom and dad are in our lives to kind of guide us so that we make the right decisions. Because sometimes as young as we are, we can make some wrong decisions. And that's why mom are there, uh, moms are there, dads are there, and God, uh, they are all there to kind of help us right? To make right decision. So and remember, our topic for today is walking in wisdom, walking in wisdom. So precious ones, the game we just played showed us having wisdom that requires the right decision. And we know that we read that from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 to the 24. Precious ones, true wisdom involves considering how our actions affect others. True wisdom involves considering how our actions affect others, right? A truly wise person will not intentionally harm or take advantage of the other person. Here, you know, so just imagine bullies at school. Bullies at school. Do you think that they are wise people? They are not. Because it is telling us that a truly wise person will not intentionally harm or take an advantage of someone. Right? That's the world's what definition of wisdom. Now, precious ones, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 um, to the 20, we can identify what God thinks about this worldly, um, um, about the, the, the worldly selfish wisdom, right? Where it's all about you, it's all about you and, and, and everything has to go um, around you. You wanna hold on to things that you don't even need. Um, you wanna go and take mom's, uh, you, you, you take the initiative of going to your mom's or your dad's wallet and take money to movies without letting them know, right? Or deciding to go cheat and by copying your friend's homework to go get good grades. These are decisions we make every day. We are not perfect, right? We make these decisions but the, the question here is that, is it a good decision or is a bad decision? And that's why we went through that matching game so that we know what is a good decision and what is a bad decision. Now, precious one, let's see what God says uh, we should do again and walk in wisdom. Now, if you have a paper or, or a, a paper and, and a pencil, just write um, write this down. We are going to list all the qualities 
as we, 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 we read James chapter one, verse five, right? And then as we read Proverbs chapter two, 11, verse two. So I want one of you to read James chapter one, verse five, and another person should read Proverbs chapter two, 11, verse two. Proverbs 11, verse two. Then uh, we can pretty much come out and kind of highlight some few things. Can any of you state actions from each of these verse that will give wisdom? So let's take the first one. Yes, um, Sean, I, I see Sean's hand up. I was going to read Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. I can do that. Sure, you can go for it. Okay. Proverbs 11, verse 2, reading from the NIV version. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Sean, Sean just read Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Now, from what he just read, who can state the actions from what? Or the action from the verse that he just read? Yes, Miss Esther. Um, humility, which was mentioned in Proverbs 11, verses 2. Humility! Oh, bless you! That's so fantastic! Humility! Humility! So, the action here, the action that we need to focus on that gives wisdom, pretty much around wisdom, is humility. So Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, highlights what? Humility. When you have wisdom, you need humility, right? Or with humility, humility comes with wisdom, right? When you have wisdom, you are humble. Now let's go to the next one, James 1, 5. Who will read that? And then let's highlight the action there. Declan. We can hear you, honey. James. I think you are far from the laptop. Can you hear me though? I can hear you, but we can't James, hear him. James one five. We can hear. Uh, oh. Can you tilt the laptop to his side a little bit? And after he's done reading. Okay. Okay, you can start again. James one five from now the, we can uh, hear. James one five from the NIRB Bible. And it says, if any one of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God will give freely to anyone and doesn't find fault. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Declan, for reading James 1 verse 5. Now, who can tell us the action here? Who can tell us the action here? Uh, Janelle, is your hand up or no? Sometimes it's hard to see. No. Your hand is not up. Okay. Benedict hand. Was it Benedict or yeah, Benedict? This action is asking God for wisdom when we lack it. Ask him for it. Ask him for it. Fantastic. God bless you. Ask him for it. So precious ones. James 1 5. The action here that they want to stress on is asking for it. Action for wisdom, right? So you action for the wisdom. And then the Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2 talks about being humble, being humble. Precious ones, humility is opposite of selfishness. Humility is the opposite of what? Selfishness. Action God for wisdom isn't necessarily had. It is not. Precious ones. It's just like going to mom and say, oh, mom, um, there's new this new game that I want so bad and I want it for Christmas. Or, oh, mom, um, I need McDonald's today. I'm really craving for McDonald's. Can I have McDonald's? Oh, mom, I can't find one of my socks. Do you know where I can find it? Oh, mom, I'm so hungry. What's cooking for today? Oh, mom, I can't clean my room. Can I do that later? Every day is mom, mom. Precious ones. As you say all these days, the same way God wants us to ask for wisdom all the time. Wisdom, wisdom, precious ones, make it a daily habit, a daily hourly habit, a daily minutes habit. Ask for wisdom. There's nothing that is too hard for God. 
Precious ones, you and I are fortunate we serve the supreme being, the almighty God, the prince of peace. Remember, and we will study about the character in the Bible, who asked God for wisdom and every other thing was added unto it. We will go down when we go further, you will understand what I'm trying to say. But precious ones, these two verses pretty much stress on two things, asking for wisdom and then the wisdom comes with what? Humility, humility. God bless you, fantastic. Oh, precious ones, you are so smart. You are so smart. Precious ones, it is not hard. It is not hard, but living a humble life that reflects the wisdom we ask for requires complete reliance on God to help us with our words and our actions. Mm. I love that last piece. I don't know about you. I'm just enjoying the scripture. I'm just enjoying my own lesson. Precious ones, asking God, let me stress on that again. Asking God for wisdom isn't necessarily hard, right? But living a humble life that reflects the wisdom we ask for requires what? It requires what? A complete reliance on God to help us with our words and our actions. Oh, it goes back to what Benedict said. Walk the talk. Walk the talk, walk the talk. If you have wisdom, it will reflect on you, right? The precious ones, don't forget to always ask for wisdom. It is very, very important. Now, precious ones, we are on it again. Somebody read for us Psalm 111, verse 10. And then the other person should also open to uh, open their Bible to Proverbs chapter two verse six. Proverbs chapter two verse six. So two things: Psalm one 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 verse ten and Proverbs chapter two verse six. Now we are going to learn the actions that re is required in these scriptures too. So who is going for the first one, Darren? So, Psalm one 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 verse six. It is it verse ten? Verse 10, please. Okay. Psalm 111, verse 10 from the NIRV. And I read, if you really want to become wise, you must begin by having respect for the Lord. All those who follow his rules have good understanding. People should praise him forever. Psalm 111, verse 10 from the NIRV Bible. Amen. Amen. Now, precious ones, what is the action here? What is the action that will help us walk in wisdom? There is an action here that will help us to walk in wisdom. James 1 verse 5 talked about what? Action for the wisdom. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2 talked about what? Humility, being humble. Now, Psalm 111 verse 10, what is it telling us? Yes. Who is going for that? Um, Sean. Um, Proverbs ch chapter two, verse six. Am I right? No, we, we are still on the Psalm 111, verse 10. Oh. So when we get to oh. Proverbs, you can read for us. But now, Darren just finished reading. We need to stress on that, on that piece. Like, what is the action that is required from us? Yes, Declan, your hand was up. Uh, you need to respect God. You need to respect God. Fantastic. The fear of, of the Lord or the fear of God. Fearing the Lord. Fearing the Lord. And you say, Yisro Erade. We have to fear God. We need to fear God. So when you are standing and you are your mom or your dad face or your Sunday school teacher's face and you are comfortably lying, you see, you are doing the things that we went over that are wrong and you, you comfortably just do it. You don't fear God. But the Proverbs Psalm 111 verse 10 is telling us to what? We should be precious ones that fear God. We need to fear God. Fantastic, Declan. God bless you. Now let's look at the one, the action that is. Let's read. Sean, you can read a Proverbs 2 verse 6 for us. 
Proverbs 2, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. Reading from the NIV version. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Amen. 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 Now, what's the action required here, Esther? Knowledge and understanding. Amen. Knowledge and understanding. I'm loving this topic. Knowledge and understanding, right? So Psalm 1, 1 verse 10 and Proverbs 2 verse 6, precious ones. We are learning that what? We need, precious ones, we need to fear God, obeying his word and not knowing his word, right? Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge is from the head, right? Wisdom. And understanding is from the head, right? So, precious ones, we have looked at four main scriptures here. James 1 verse 5, where it talks about asking God for wisdom. Then the Proverbs 11 chapter 2 talks about what? We being humble, right? When we rely on God, right? God will grant us wisdom that what it will reflect in us and what will be humble in whatever thing we do, right? Now, when you come to the Psalm 111 verse 10, and then the Proverbs 2 verse 3, it, it highlights fear, the fear of the Lord, obeying his word, and knowing his word. So we don't have to only know the word. Do you get it? We don't only have to know God's word. But we also have to do what? We come back to Benedict. Walk the talk. Walk the talk. We don't only have to know what? The word. But we need to what? Also what? Obey the word. It is when you know the word and then you act on it. Then it means you are doing both, right? But we can know the word and you can, you can what? Obey it. And you won't fear God. But precious ones, we have learned that we need to put them together. Anybody have any question before we move on? I'm just loving this, this, this lesson. Okay, let's move on. So precious ones, when we read Psalm 119, verse 105, we can rely on God's word. Take time and read it. But we can rely on God's word, right? On his word to help us make wise decisions and live for God. Today's story is good reminder that when we have, we, have, we have tough choices or hard decisions to make, there is only one place to go. And who is, who is the person we need to go to? When we get ourselves or we get stuck on, on a decision that is really hard to make, who should we turn to? Yes. God. Um, Janelle. God. We need to turn to God. We need to turn to Jesus. We need to turn to Jesus. We need to turn to God. It, it, it's telling us that he is the only source of wisdom. God is the only source of wisdom. If you are walking by the roadside or when you go to your YouTubes and Snapchat and all those places that you guys visit on social media, right? When you go there and somebody tells you that, hey, I'm the source of wisdom. I can provide you with wisdom. I'm telling you that's a lie. If you read the Bible, the only source of our wisdom is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Lord, who is the supreme being. Precious one, I want you to take this. Even if you don't remember anything from this class today, there's one thing I want you to carry with you. And that is the only source of our wisdom is the Lord Jesus Christ, is God. Therefore, now if you embrace that the only place we can get it from, then where do we go? Now it, it, it falls back on first James, right? I said first James, sorry, there's nothing like that. James chapter one, verse five, where it talks about what? We ask him for it and he will give it to us. He will not rebuke us, right? It's precious ones. Now, if you read first Kings chapter three, from the three to 15, I just summed it up. It talks about Solomon. 
uh, um, was pretty much the son of David, King David. And he was a good man who loved God. God was pleased with Solomon's heart and he offered to give Solomon anything he wanted. Ooh, precious ones. Just imagine, just show, God shows up in your face today, right? And tell you, Benedict, Janelle, Darren, Declan, Miss Esther, um, Sir, Sir, Sir Sean, hey, what do you want? Name anything. Precious ones, what would you ask? It's a tough one, right? It's just like mom will ask you, what do you guys want for Christmas? Everybody begins to list their stuff, right? The same way. Ask yourself, what will you ask for? But when you take the time, I want you to go read First Kings, the story about Solomon. First Kings chapter three. Take the time and read. Because it will help you a lot. Now, if we go to the first Kings chapter three, verse the 16 to the 28, the Bible says that Solomon asked for wisdom to make the right decisions and to be a good king. Hmm. It means that as human as we are, for you to become a good leader, for you to become a good person or a smart kid in class, you need wisdom, right? You need wisdom for that. And Solomon, because he wanted to make be a good king, not a king that will pretty much lead the people um, away or lead them away from or win their heart away from God, but a leader that will, will walk in the ways of God, he asked God for wisdom. When God told him that, ask me of anything. Precious one. Solomon was so wise. Rulers from across the world came to visit him just to learn from him. Precious ones, when the wisdom of God, when you go to the source of, 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 of the person with the wisdom, who is Jesus, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, precious ones, people will come to you and ask you, oh, wow, Miss Esther, how did you solve this math? I have done everything. I just can't get it right. Oh, wow. Miss Janelle, how did you do this? You're so creative. I'm, I can look at this art and I know that this is not common. This, this is unique. Somebody can look at, oh, Benedict, how did you do this? Oh, Sean, how did you do it? Declan Darren, how did you come up with this? They will ask because this is not ordinary, right? When you ask for wisdom and the wisdom of God comes upon your life, you will be the head and not the tail. You will be the first among your equals. All you have to do is to what? Ask. Ask, 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 ask. This is not Antonina saying. The Bible is telling you in James 1 verse 5 that go ask, ask. Let's see my hands, though, that are going to start asking from today. Just ask. Ask for it. We need to ask anything from God. God is closer to us than our friends, more than a friend. We are close to us more than mommy and daddy. Therefore, go to them. You can put your hands down, precious ones. You can go to God and ask for wisdom. Now, Solomon couldn't hide. Um, I mean, Solomon could not have had anything he wanted, right? He could have asked for anything, but he, he decided to just go for wisdom. He could have asked for money. He could have asked for more power, right? He could have asked for anything. But Solomon requested for wisdom. It shows that what? He was already a very wise man. Yes, Benedict. And actually, asking for wisdom is the smallest thing because wisdom is literally woven into everything and anything that you do. So if you want money, you would have the brains to figure out how to get your money. Or if you want more power, his brain is already legal way. So wisdom is really the answer to your point. Amen. Amen. Great contribution. Wisdom. Wisdom. 
is a great source, right? It's the solution to most of, 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 of things. Precious, let me tell you something. Sometimes you go to school, everybody, one way or the other, you go to a class in your class, you know those that are good, right? You say, oh, he's so smart. He's good at that. Precious ones, let me tell you, they are not smarter than you. Or I know all of you here, you are smart in your classes and it's good, but you can still be more smarter. All you have to do is to ask. Let us ask for it. Let us ask God for wisdom. It is good we do. God is our creator. He is the one who made us and the world around us. He sent his son, Jesus, to live as a man and die for our sins. There is no choices, no situation, no scenario that God has not seen or faced a thousand times before. Hmm. There is no better source for wisdom than the God who give us what? The Bible, precious ones. The only source is wisdom. You can share with us if you have any story, anything you want to relate to, or if you have any contribution, you can share with us. But precious ones that join us, we are talking about working in wisdom. Precious ones, children ministry, our COP, we all COP USA, Children's Ministry. Our prayer is that all precious ones around the world will always go to God and ask for wisdom because he is the source of wisdom. He's the only place that when we go and ask, we don't have to pay anything. And he will not rebuke you for saying that you are not perfect, you are not beautiful, you are not that, you're not this, you're not tall, you're not this color, or you're not that. God says, come on to me. Let my children come to me. So God is telling you, come me to me, come to me and ask. Precious ones, let us ask for wisdom. Somebody's hand was up. You can go ahead. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So precious ones, we'll go over. Benedict, the floor is open. You can go before I continue. Yeah, I just want to say about something about wisdom that I did a bit of research for you before I got here. So, to start, our wisdom is trauma out in Hebrew, and it's wrong, like I said, it's wrong to anything. So when you do good, you're getting it. When you do all these bad, it's hurting you. And the scripture that I read, Proverbs 1 that says, the readiness of a fool will destroy them, but the one who listens to wisdom knows security. And Proverbs actually does a very good job of personifying this wisdom as a lady who runs over the earth and gives wisdom to anybody that will listen. You're the key. That will listen. Because if you're not ready for the wisdom or over your play Nintendo, Mario Kart 8, ooh, that's a mushroom. <laughs> You're not ready. Like, you have to be ready. You have to be, how I say, ready for the revelation. You can, and the thing is, once you gain that wisdom, or like Solomon, you can use that to make your life beautiful. And I mean by make your life beautiful and make a better life out of you or live a good life. Like Solomon, he used the wisdom that God gave him to build a temple to honor him. Like, that's, that's the type of thing that when God gives you a gift, you don't use it to your advantage. You always, whenever God gives you a gift, or in this case, we're talking about wisdom, you always want to give back and help other people. And people say, hmm, well, I'm a kid. What can I do? Well, do things that are in your range. Like, do things about your parents telling you to do them. When you have a cookie, and you have, really have more than one, or you have one, because they're going to have to give it to your brother, sister, or friend. Sharing is always caring. These are the things that you should do God proud. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Precious ones, as we narrow our lessons down, there is a number of ways to seek wisdom from God. Like Solomon, we can go to God directly in prayer. Right? So now we are narrowing down our lesson, walking in wisdom. And Antonina keeps saying that 
the only source of our wisdom is God, right? And then James chapter one, verse five talks about what? Action for the wisdom. Proverbs 1, 11, 2. Um, Proverbs 11, 2 talks about what? Being humble, right? And then we looked at what? Psalm 1, 1, 1, verse 10, when it, where it talks about what? The fear of the Lord. And then we also looked at the Proverbs where it talks about knowing God, right? And also what? Obeying him. So as we narrow all our lesson down per the game, the matching game we had about what the good idea cards and the old, uh, the bad idea cards, we got to know practical examples, practical examples of what we go through as precious ones, when we make right decisions and when we make um, things that are, when we do or a list of things that we think are bad decisions and things that are good decisions, right? And then we match them together. Now, as we narrow it down to bring our lessons to an end, precious ones, there are a few things that I want to stress on that I want us to carry with us. And the one way is that when we look at, um, when it comes to wisdom, seeking wisdom from God, Solomon here, he went to God directly in prayer. And that's why we said what? Well, go to God and ask, right? Now, when we are faced with tough choices, the best thing to do is to what? Get alone, clear your mind and focus on Christ. Because sometimes when you listen to friends too much, that will even get you more confused and you make the wrong decisions, right? Remember, Jesus loved little children. He is closer to us than a friend or a mother. Therefore, go to God in prayer and ask God, right? Ask God, pour your heart to God and God will hear you. Let him know what choices we are facing, right? And where you are caught in between. God, I'm so confused. I'm torn between this and that. Holy Spirit of the living God, help me to make the right choices. You may think that um, as a child, you won't go through that. Yes, you do. That's why sometimes when you are going to do something that you've been told not to, you hear these two voices. One say, oh, do it. The other one say, don't do it. You'll get in trouble. The other one say, just do it. When, when you do it and you got asked, just say, no me, no me, I didn't do it, right? It's just leading you to one trouble to the other. When you get to that point, ask yourself, I said, God, what does the word of God say about bad choices and good choices. So God can help you make the right choices, right? He still wants us to bring it to him so that he can help you make the choices. Don't think nothing is too small. No choices or no ideas that you are being, you are struggling with is big or small. Just go to God and ask. Another way to find wisdom is to ask someone you know and trust. Now here, precious ones, the best people that you can go find wisdom, but what? Asking them that when people you think you know and you trust, one person can be who? Let's list them. What are some of the people you know you can go to that you trust to share what you are struggling with for them to help you? Yes, Declan. Adaron. The chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Huh? <laughs> Declan, that's too far. You are right. But why do I want to go to the chairman of Church of Pentecost? He's in Ghana. I need a plane ticket to go. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good answer. But it's too far from here. Uh, you see, the way Solomon got wisdom is way too easy for me. You see, uh -huh. he got wisdom, but then he started, you know, like down, downplaying it. Like it uh -huh. started meaning less to him. You see, because when you read the Bible, in Solomon's time, if you had silver, it wasn't worth very much. Because mm -hmm. even though silver, now you find silver, like, is that silver? Now with this, that is how you see it. But in Solomon's time, it was worth a lot because of how Solomon ruled. But the way he got it is too easy. But if you travel to Ghana, and then Apostle Eric Nyamiche to give you all these advice and set of rules, and then you asked all the apostles, they all gave you all what they think would give you advice. 
when you are done, you see the list, you check mark all of them down, keep them there, you see. And then when you when you are done, you get it, you see. You see, I went to Ghana, I flew a plane. When that was done, I asked Apostle Eric Namiche. He gave me all of these advice. And if it wasn't for him, I'm not sure I would be here today. You see, you'd say you'd give all of them the credit, you know, and, and it would be true too. You see, but instead, well, Solomon, the way he got this was also a bit miraculous. Yes, because so you think that you are coming from the angle that asking people that of a higher authority comes will make will cause you to value it. I think no. it's a good it's a good contribution, but um let's narrow it down. I then the reason why I'm saying that is that even I am sure most of our children in, in, in here in US or even in the locals, some of them don't even know Apostle Nyamiche, right? As they age, that's when they will get to know. So let's bring it to our level. Yes, Esther. God. God, we all we already we already the first one was God. And oh. that's when we use Solomon that we go to God in prayer. Now, the second part we are looking at is anyone. Another way to find wisdom is to ask someone you know and you trust, right? So who? Yes, Janelle. Our parents. Our parents, our mom and dad. You know them. You trust them. You don't need a plane to go to them, right? <laughs> you don't need a plane to go to them. So Declan. Darren, now you understand where, where I'm coming from now. It's a fantastic um, contribution you make, but we want the ones that are so close to us that you don't have to spend money to, to go to them to ask. Fantastic. Yes, Miss Esther. Oh, I was going to say someone you trust um, and that is like, like um, that like abides in God and like, he, uh, like reads the Bible and prays. Basically, one that has good advice. Yeah, like your dad. Your dad is a pastor. So another one is a pastor, the pastors. And I also for my niece, right? You should trust them to go to, right? There's this program I always do in my region here where I bring my regional head's wife um, at the end of, of Christmas to, to kind of relate to us. And my goal here is for, for, for her to relate to the children and for the children to also relate to her so that they don't feel like, oh, I can't go to um, mommy or I can't go to daddy, right? Because most of the children here, they think that the region head is the, the big boss, right? So that's why they, oh, the big man is here. When we go to conventions that, oh, is the big man going to be at the back here? Or is, is mommy gonna be? So you have to let them know they are spiritual fathers, right? So that they can go to them anytime and ask if something is bothering them. Because some kids may not ask their parent. They may go and ask their pastor or Osofumami, right? My, my daughters will say that um, Osofumamis are pastor daddies. Or they say pastor mommy. And they call pastors, pastors daddies. I don't know how they relate to that. Pastor, they call them pastor daddies and mommy, um, pastor mommies, right? But they should be, you should have that safe environment to go to them and talk anytime you want to. So the first one, our parents, right? Somebody said parent is yes, you can trust your parents and go to them and talk. You can also talk to your what? Your pastors and your sofa mommies. Who else? Who else can we go talk to? Who do you think you know you can trust to talk to? Yes, um, Janelle. Um, well, you could talk to maybe your older siblings and your aunts and uncles. You can talk to your uncles and grandparents, right? You can talk to your Sunday school teacher. Remember here, the word is trust. You know and trust. If you know them and you trust them, right? You can go to them, right? The best people also like your grandparents, right? They've been there before. Pretty much, if we look in the Bible, in the story of Solomon, Queen Sheba had to go to Solomon and learn how he leads the people. 
right? So people from afar realize that this king is full of wisdom. We need to learn from him. Precious ones, when you ask God for wisdom and the wisdom of God comes upon you, people will see you very, to, uh, um, will see you in a very unique way. You will stand out and people will always ask, how, how, how is she able to do this? How is she able to do that? Right? You need wisdom in whatever we do. Precious ones, I ask for wisdom every day. I need wisdom in my leadership. I need wisdom as a mother to nurture my children. I need wisdom as I lead. I need wisdom as a student. I need wisdom as, 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 as a sister. I need wisdom as a child of God. We need wisdom in whatever we do. Because what comes out of your mouth will make you, excuse me, to say a foolish person or a wise person. And that's why we need wisdom. Precious ones. Finally, don't forget to open your Bible. Remember, the fear of the Lord, knowing the word of God, and what? Obeying the word of God. What do you do when you have wronged someone? When someone wronged you, do you always have to tell the truth? Have you handled temptations? Or has some temptations come in your way? And how did you handle it? Every answer you need is right here in the Bible. Big or small, whatever choices you are facing, there is a verse for that in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible, precious one. There is a verse for every question you have because God is the source of our wisdom. The same source of wisdom Solomon met in his dreams is available to us here in our Bible. God didn't just tell us to do the right thing and leave us on our own. We have his son, Jesus Christ, and we have his word, right? So whatever that is tough for you or whatever that is so tough that you are facing, God has an answer for it and it's in the Bible. And I want you to rely on that. Precious ones, what have you learned today? We're going to go around, you share with us, we bring our lesson to an end. Now the floor is open. Who will go first? Sean. What I've learned today is that um, you should always make good decisions. You should never do anything bad and that you should always take wisdom with you and ask God for anything you need. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Esther. Now we go to um, Daron. Today I learned that we should always ask God or a person that we trust and that we know um, for advice or just anything we need. And I also learned about um, being wise and wisdom. And we also read um, a bunch of memory verses that basically were examples of what we were talking about today. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, Janelle. What I learned today is that you should make good decisions instead of bad decisions because they, they could lead to problems and that you should ask for someone you trust to help you solve your problems. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Fantastic. Yes, um, Darren. What I, what, well, I learned a series of things. And the first and main one is that there are multiple ways to get wisdom Pull, pull the laptop close to you now. We can't hear you. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Okay. So what I'm saying is the main thing that I learned is that there are multiple ways to get wisdom, but the easiest of them all is to get them to is to get them all. And the first one, which I believe you emphasized a lot on, is humility. Yeah, when we read a lot of verses about humility and asking God for it, we should also respect God. No, we should have knowledge and understanding and obey and knowing his word. Those things all give us humility. Then if you have all of them, it will like basically guarantee that you get wisdom because 
it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And half of the half of the things on my list are all asking God or respecting him or having knowledge and understanding. Amen. God bless you. Yes, Declan, you want to go before Benedict goes? Amen. Uh, so I, what I learned is that to, to oh, I kind of forgot. That's okay. We'll go to Benedict and let me know if you still want to chip in something, okay? Benedict, you can go. I learned today that to have wisdom, you have to feel there, and you also have to put God first in everything that you do. So then God will help you. And also, wisdom is in everything. When you need something, you should consult someone, like a pastor or your parents, or someone near you that you know and trust, and you also know that they'll be able to answer questions. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes, Declan. Uh, so what I learned is that we should have the wisdom from God and not the wisdom from the world, because mm. Because in, uh, in Proverbs somewhere there, it says that the, the world's wisdom is foolish to God because, well, it, the world's wisdom is different from God's types of wisdom. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Um, was Esther saying that? Yes. Um, I just wanted to add uh, additional qualities for wisdom, uh, a few quick ones. Um, so I wanted to add obeying him and his word. Um, compassion and patience. Amen. Obeying his word, compassion and patience. God bless you, Miss uh, Esther. Fantastic contribution. I love this topic. I just don't know why, but I just love this series. God richly, richly bless you. Precious ones, today we talked about walk in wisdom. It is very, very important. Walk in wisdom. Do not forget to ask from now on, Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Let it ring in your ear all the time. Ask him for wisdom. Next week, we'll be back again with another series, Walking, um, but we'll know, I think we'll walk in faith. We are going to talk about walking in faith, walking in faith. So we'll be back again, um, same time um, next week. Precious ones, we want you to stay safe. God richly loves you. Remember, the only source of our wisdom is God. He is the one that gives wisdom. And even if you don't know the whole story, go read about Solomon and you will know that you serve a mighty God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for bringing us to the end of our lesson. God, help us to choose wisdom over sin. We want to show others that we are different because you know us. Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious ones, we love you and we come your way again next week. Until then, it's kiss time with Jesus. We love you and see you. Bye. 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 We love Bye. you. Bye.